Hey everyone, and welcome to week two of Art Starts Explores Contrast. My name is Kay Slater, and I will be here uh, working with you to explore contrast all throughout the month of December. If you have, uh, if you joined us last week, welcome back. If this is your first week joining us, um, I'm so happy to have you here. You can check out our previous episodes um, online at Facebook or YouTube or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. Okay, so last week uh, we explored contrast um, through opposites, through differences. Uh, we looked at crayons and we looked at scribbles and then we, by figuring out what colors we had included in uh, backgrounds or some things that we colored, we then tried to not have those colors um, in other objects that we layered on top of each other so that we could really see the difference um, between each one of the layers. And so that was, that was uh, an exploration of opposites. This week, or for this episode, what I want us to look at is um, the idea that contrast can build something called depth. And so we were kind of talking about that last week with the idea that we were layering um, the color and the paper on top of each other. Um, but what I mean by depth is, is that when we draw or we make a, a painting, if we're not doing something sculptural or we're not building up a scene or we're not doing a, a theater production, if we're just working in a 2D space on a piece of paper, um, contrast is a technique that we can use to build depth so that the things that we're drawing look like they've got some, some weight or some mass or some dimension to them. So for this exploration, that what, what we're going to do this week is we're going to explore contrast through depth. And uh, I want to encourage you to make along with me. If you don't want to, you just want to watch and be inspired, that's, that's cool too. But if you can find some paper, and remember, pa any paper is good whatever you can find from the recycling bin. I still have this paper bag that I found in my recycling bin last week. I wanted to keep it for this week. Um, things that have been already printed on, maybe some other things that you've already drawn on or you tried before, ripped paper, um, anything will do. If you take it from the recycling bin, that's great because you really don't have to worry um, that you're going to be using something that belongs to somebody else because they were just going to throw it out. And then a mark making tool. I remember a mark making tool is really it's anything that will make a mark that could be any color that could be uh, any medium whether it's a crayon or a marker or a pencil whatever you want to make your marks with i tend to stick with black markers when i'm exploring with you every week just because there's a lot of contrast it's easier for you to see black on white and oftentimes i find white paper in my recycling bin and it's just easier for you to see because there's no white in this black when I am um, writing or drawing on a white piece of paper. And so, oh, contrast, I wrote contracts. <laughs> that's okay, right? We're just making, we can make mistakes, no big deal. So that's why I tend to use black, but you can really use any color that you want. You know what, I'm gonna stick with this piece of paper and I'm gonna flip it over and we'll start here. Oh, and I got a pencil mark there already. And that's okay because we're not making anything for keeps we're just trying some things out okay so i was talking about wanting to explore depth with you so i think an easy way for us to start is to come up with some kind of object and that we'll we'll talk about depth and contrast based on that object that we draw so this next part this is us warming up draw whatever you would like try to draw something medium size compared to the paper that you have just so that we can we have a, a big enough space to work in if you just have a small scrap that's fine but if you have a bigger piece of paper maybe uh maybe a quarter of the paper um and then we're gonna we're gonna take it off of that piece of paper as well so trying to make it a, a good size if you don't know what to draw i always like to just draw a figure and whether that's me or whether that's just a body um i i like drawing people because we we feel connected to people we are people we are humans so sometimes just drawing um, a person can make us feel more connected to what we're trying out 
we go. I got my purse in with one big ear than they, the other, and that's okay. Maybe they've got a hairstyle like me where they've got long hair and then maybe some shaved sides. There you go, I'm gonna have some cuts. And then a neck. And remember, you can draw anything. You could be drawing um, a horse. You could be drawing uh, a sandwich. You could be drawing uh, a cat. You could be drawing anything, anything you want. There are no rules, whatever you feel like drawing. And it doesn't have to be a good drawing either. It can just be whatever you want to try. It doesn't need to be good at all. sneakers. Okay. There. So I drew a human. And I think I'm going to want to put some sleeves on this. There you go. There. So I've got a human figure right here. Okay. So the first thing that I want us to look at is whatever mark making tool that you used on whatever surface you used, how easy is it to see the figure that you drew or the object that you drew? And if you're still drawing, keep going. Don't worry about it. You could pause the video if you want, or come back later, or just listen, or read the, uh, the captions as you continue to draw. But if you are done, or if you're at a point where you can pause, take a moment to look at the piece of paper and then the figure that you drew. Is it easy to, to see the, uh, the figure that you drew? If you drew it on, say, some brown paper, or some black paper, or a sticky note. What's different if you keep the material the same, the, the, um, the mark making tool that you used, and you try drawing this again on different surfaces, what do you notice? Yeah, I'm gonna use the bag. I was really keen to use this last week. I like how crinkly it is. And uh, if you can hear, it also makes uh, a kind of sharp, sparkly sound by all the crinkles on the page. Yeah, so it's very different from this white piece of paper here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my figure again. Maybe I'll draw it a little bit bigger. That's okay. Oh, the ear wasn't all the way together. <laughs> Just for fun. Pants are shorter on this one than the other one. <laughs> and that's okay. There you go. Okay. So, oh, this figure ends up being taller. That's all right. They're kind of the same figure. Maybe, maybe this, um, this figure is related to this figure, or maybe this figure is this, this figure, um, when they grow up, but they've got kind of a similar shape. What do you notice? If you were able to draw it on a different piece of paper, which is easier to see? Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time because I had this piece of paper, this black piece of paper right here. And I'm gonna draw my figure again right here. Same time, small pants. All right. So there we go. I drew it on three different surfaces here. Which one's the easiest to, to see? If you drew it on multiple surfaces, look at yours. What's the easiest to see? What else do you notice? For me, because I drew with a black pen on a black background, this one is really hard to see. There just isn't very much contrast or difference between each of the pieces, right? Each, or sorry, the, draw, the marks on top of the paper there. There just really isn't that much of a difference. Even though brown is typically associated with um, a darker color, this is a light brown, right? So even though this is a brown background, black is different. It's very different from this black marker. And so I can, I can really see this character, this figure on top of this, um, this surface. I think what makes it the most difficult for me to be able to tell is the crinkles. 
is because there's so much extra stuff going on that my eye is distracted. It wants to pay attention to some of the crinkles around the outside, not just the figure here. Whereas this figure that I did on the white piece of paper, even though there's an X up in the corner and there's this pencil mark that I have here, there's so much of a difference between the absence of color, the white in the background here, and the black marker that I used here that I can't help but pay attention to this figure here. So already I've added some depth because I can tell that this character is on top of whatever is in this background here. It's harder here. It, it feels very much like both of these characters are very flat, right? because this, this surface, there isn't that much difference. But the more difference that there is between each of the colors, the more contrast, the easier it is to, um, to really perceive um, that character. Okay, so let's, let's take the other colors. I'm gonna push those over to the side. And if you're gonna continue to try drawing your same figure on different surfaces, see what you can do, see what you, what can, what you learn. What else do you notice? Okay, so without anything to compare, when I just go back to looking at this figure here, it starts to look pretty flat again. It's a, it's a cartoon character that's on this surface. And so while there's a lot of difference between this light background and these dark marks I've made, there's really no source of light other than the natural light in the world here that is coming from my lamp above onto this piece of paper. And that's one of the reasons why it feels really flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a classic uh, contrast technique, which is using shadow. Because if you think of it, if what's the opposite of light is shadow, is darkness, right? Is an absence of light when you take light away. And so a great way of uh, building depth um, is to use that contrast of light and dark when you're thinking about a figure. And you know what, I drew this figure here, but I think I also wanna show with just another simple object in case you did a simple object. So I'm gonna do a piece of candy. Nice simple object. There we go. And so inside this, this candy um, is, I, I've decided it's gonna be strawberry flavored. Okay, so it's still pretty flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide that there is a light source. Specifically, it's gonna be the sun here. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I want you to pay attention to um, as far as the light source here in this character is that this light source is pretty small, right? Compared to this figure. And that probably means that it's far away. Check it out. Next time you are taking a picture, if you have a lamp behind you or a light, walk really far away from it and then take your picture and then walk really close to it and take your picture and notice if the size of the light gets bigger or smaller in that picture. So I know that the sun is really, 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 really far away, um, at least on from this planet, because I'm not getting burned up. None of us are getting burned up, except when we're not wearing a sunscreen, and that's just a little bit of burn. So this sun is really, really far away. And this character is really, really close to us because it's so much bigger uh, compared to the size of the sun. And so already I'm starting to create depth by contrasting size. And so the size of this far back in the background using perspective is small, whereas my character is really big and really close. Have you ever seen a piece of candy that is the size of a human? Maybe you have, but generally candy is not that size. So in this case, I'm using it again, where this candy is probably in front of everything. It's probably the closest to us because it's so big relative to the other things behind it. So again, I'm contrasting size to imply depth. So now that we've, we've, used, we've used size and we've established that the light is behind both of these figures here, 
right? Because the sun would be bigger if it was in front. So the sun is behind. So first of all, we know that the light is behind these characters and it's above these figures. If I had drawn a flashlight, uh, here, where, where is it sticking out? There we go. If I had drawn a flashlight down here instead, there we go. The light would be down below. And again, the size of it kind of looks like this flashlight um, is still smaller than that candy, right? Because a candy would usually probably be about that size compared to a flashlight. So that candy is still the furthest ahead. So this would be in front of the flashlight and my figure would be, be behind the flashlight and then the sun would be really far away. But before we look at this light source, we're gonna just, we're gonna stick with a, a static light source, a source that doesn't move. So this sun from behind. Okay, so now what we get to do is we get to go, all right, well, if the sun is behind, you probably got a lot of shadow going on um, in front of this character. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show shadow simply by drawing some lines. I'm just gonna go, I'm not gonna be too careful about it. I'm just gonna go that we know that the sun is behind. Here we go, right? And so I've kind of shown by, by crossing out um, or by putting these lines here, by not coloring it in all the way, because it's not a really dark shadow, even though the sun is up in the sky and it's behind, when you stand outside in the sunshine, it's not like uh, when the sun is behind you, you come become completely black in shadow, no light in the front, completely in dark. There is still some light that bounces off other objects, and so the front of you is a little bit light. So I've implied that this body is in shadow more on this side then on this side. Same with this candy. I'm gonna go, okay, well, this is pretty far away. And so probably this is in shadow. This is in shadow. That's in shadow, right? Anywhere where the sun couldn't get right at it, that's where I've put those lines. How else could you show shadow? I did lines. You could do dots. You could use some light color. You could use some paint. You could use other objects that you layer on top of it. If you want to just explore how to shadow or add, um, add some shadow to your character right now, that would, be, that would be a great thing to explore. But for me, I'm going to stick with the lines. Okay, so this is implying depth again, right? So this, this body is further away or at least is more in shadow than this side of the body. But I know that the arm here is not exactly the same, like there's, there's some dimension. This arm is not stuck to this body here. And so that means that that arm is probably casting some shadow on this body over here. And so I'm going to add some shadow here. I'm going to add some more shadow there. And so by adding those lines, I've said that there's some dimension that that arm is separate and is casting a shadow on the rest of the body. I'm going to do the same thing. So this leg looks like it's a little bit behind that leg. I'm going to add a bit more shadow over here. Same thing, this leg on this side, it's a little bit more dark. The front of this shoe is a little bit more dark. Probably the inside of this shoe here, so the sun doesn't get in. This side of the body is further away, and so it kind of recedes back in the body. So I'm gonna add some more depth there. And then this arm, same thing. This is pretty far away, and so I'm gonna add some more lines on there. There we go. All right. So just by thinking about the differences between light and dark, and about creating sharper or um, more shadows in certain places, I've started to imply some depth in this figure. I'm going to do some on the neck too, because I feel like it, it's important. There we go. Maybe a few, a little bit on the chin. Okay. Same thing with this candy over here. So if you think about um, a circle, and this can be really fun if you do have access to a flashlight, is you can take objects and you can take your light and you can move your flashlight around an object to see how the shadow moves. What's the darkest space? 
well, what's the darkest part of an object when you move the light around? And if you move the light really far and the right light really close, what happens to the shadow? Exploring shadows and contrast can be really fun, especially if you're going to do shadow puppets or if you're going to build a scene with shadow, because you can start to build depth based on where you put your light and how sharp or how dark you make your shadows. Um, so you don't even need to have things that are layered on top of each other. What you're doing is, is you're layering light or the lack of light. Um, and so that's generally also when you're talking about contrast, it's easier to see contrast when there's a lot of light because you can see everything versus when you turn the light down. And here, I'll give you an example. Here's my white piece of paper and here's my dark. And the reason we can really tell the difference is because there's a lot of light and we can see the light bouncing off the white pieces of paper. And where the light can't bounce off these dark marks here, we're getting a high contrast. But what happens, I'm going to reach up and I'm going to turn down my light a little bit. Here we go. Okay. So is it as high a contrast as it was before? Is there as much of a difference between that figure and the white piece of paper? I think I can even turn down my light even more. Unplug this light here. There we go. All right. And there. Okay. So you can still kind of see the difference between, right? I haven't completely blocked off all the light in my space. The windows are still letting sun in, but it's definitely harder to see now between um, the white paper in the background and the black paper. But because they were so high contrast, because the colors were so different from each other when the light was on, even though we've pulled away some of the light, you can still tell the difference. I'm gonna pull back my brown piece of paper my black piece of paper. Can you even see where the figure is on the black piece of paper on the right? I can't see it. I can kind of see the black figure, the black drawn figure on my brown piece of paper, but it's definitely harder to see than it is the white and the black because those are the op, you know, there's so much opposition between the white and the black here. Whereas, um, this black has some of those tones, some of that brown that is included in the color black, because black is all colors, right? So just by bringing light into our art playing, we're starting to uh, be able to change the contrast, change the um, how easy it is to be able to pick out figures um, on, on a space. And so yeah, if you have a if you have a flashlight, that can be really really fun to start using a flashlight and figuring out where shadows are, especially especially if you're drawing in front of a mirror. If you ever uh, wanted to try drawing your face, um, you can look in a mirror and then you can change up the light so you can really see how the shadow plays on your face and start to figure out and learn about depth um, or about the dimensions of your face. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing as what I did my figure over there is that uh, anywhere where I feel like the light would be blocked by the object itself, I've added a bit more darkness um, to the figure. Oh, same thing. So I've gone underneath this time and I've made the line a little bit bigger because that's another way of exploring um, contrast is by adding um, um, bolder lines. You're adding emphasis to certain things so that people uh, people's eyes are more drawn and they they uh, they feel like they're closer to uh, to those objects. There we go. So you can really tell the difference when I emphasize, when I make those lines bigger on the thing that is the closest, which is the big part of the candy in the middle here, and then maybe part of that wrapper there that comes towards me. So anything that, that's closer to me, I've made bigger lines. And so there's, um, there's more contrast. Your eyes are uh, paying attention to this more. Um, the emphasis is more on those objects than on those other objects. And so we're continuing to add depth by adding um, more weight to these lines. 
So those are some ways to explore depth. Another way is to actually layer the, the things that we're looking at. And so I'm gonna take my figure, I might do both my figures. I might do my, um, my candy and my person. But you know what? I'm gonna rip the paper a little bit closer. You don't have to, you don't have to get it really close. You can just uh, rip it in a rectangle like I did. If you feel like it, or if you have access to a safe pair of scissors, you could cut out your figure. But you, if you've, uh, if you've made along with me before, you know I love to rip paper. Any excuse to rip paper, I'm gonna take it. And so I'm gonna rip out, rip out my figure. Ah, there we go. Okay, so even just on this background, right, because the dark green of my back of my uh, cutting mat here is, um, it doesn't have very much white in some places, right, because it's got the white uh, grid lines there. But but the, in the where the green is, there isn't a lot of white. Um, it's, uh, there's, there's very little white in the hue of, of that green, right. And so um, it's easy to really see the difference between where the figure is, or at least where the piece of paper is, and the background. Um, sometimes you'll notice in illustrations, um, illustrators will, will actually leave a white space or a, a white border around the outside of their, uh, of their drawing so that they can really have a high contrast between the busy background space and a plain white border. And so next time you are making with somebody and somebody is using all the black markers and you're like, I really wanna use a black marker because I like how, how dark, how high contrast my drawing is when I can use black. Now you know if you can find a white pencil crayon or you could, you could, um, you could paste whatever you're drawing onto a white border. And that's even better than um, having all, uh, just using a black marker. Okay, remember how I said the layering, right? So we could take this figure and then we could just layer it on top. But contrast is really about being able to tell the difference, to be able to really, um, to not lose any information. And so because this character back here and the, um, the candy is, is all colored in black, it still kind of gets lost, right? It, the, the white here helps around the outside of the candy here, but it kind of feels like they're all the same drawing. So what can we do to create more contrast between this object that we've placed in front and feels like maybe this character back there is holding this really big piece of candy? What could we do? Well, I brought up one of the um, one of the ways earlier, which was we can add some more weight, make thicker lines, so that um, you're paying more attention, or the object that's in front is more defined. And so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go through and I'm going to just make these lines a little bit bigger. It's most of the lines on the figure behind, pretty small, right? And if you drew a couple of different things, you, you could try drawing uh, some of the figures with really thick lines. You could try um, different thick lines in different places. See how I, I'm not adding thick lines to all of the parts of the candy. Um, and some lines I'm definitely making way thicker than other ones. You can start exploring what areas need to be thicker and which ones need to be uh, thinner. Okay, so just by adding a little bit of weight, you can start to really tell the difference between this uh, layered candy, this, uh, this object that's sitting on top of this one. What else could we do? What else could we add to add more contrast? Well, I do have this black piece of paper here. I could layer the character on top of the background. What do you think? Did that add more or less contrast? 
if you took your drawing or your figure that you uh, ripped or you cut out and you start putting it on different backgrounds, can you find a background that makes uh, your eye really pay attention to the drawing and feels like the, the drawing or the figure that you put on top is closer to you than the background? With the black, it kind of feels like it's floating in space. So what I want to do is I'm going to take another white piece of paper, one of the white pieces of paper that's had some printing on it. I'm going to leave it folded, because why not? It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to, nothing's for keeps. I'm going to put it on this background. Okay, so you really lose the white, right? The white, the white background. So you're, you're paying attention to those lines again. Remember how I said thicker lines up here in the front made you really pay attention to um, that object, it drew your eyes, the greatest emphasis was there. Um, and then we had kind of smaller lines. Well, what if we now had even smaller lines in the background? I'm not even gonna change my color. We know that we can have different contrast um, by starting to switch up our color, but I'm gonna stick to black and white just to now see if size, changing the size of the lines can help. And so I think I'm gonna draw um, a ground for my figure to be standing on. Okay, so there's a nice thin background. Does that look like it's in the background more than say if I was to go and use, oh, there, there goes my candy, I'll put my candy to the side for a second. What if I was going to draw a really thick background line, the same, the same one as the same size as what I already have there. In fact, I'm going to go even bigger because that's the same size as this one. I want to see what happens if I draw a really thick, big background and which one looks like there's more depth, which one looks like it's more in the background. Add some more over here. Right? Isn't it great when you use recycled paper? You can, you can try it on multiple sides. You don't have to worry about it being perfect because we're just trying things out. Okay, here we go. So which one feels like it's farther away? I feel like I could even move this character down here Maybe they're like in a room, right? The wall is, is further back. It's not really very close. Whereas this line, what do you notice? I feel like they're just standing on the ground, right? This is the ground. There is no background there. This is where the character is standing. I'm gonna get rid of some of the white under the shoe because I wanna, I wanna be able to see that more clearly. There's a lot of white down there. You can do, you can leave it, but I decided I wanted I wanted to try it. Make the full thick line. Here, I'm making it really thick. Very different from the character. Here we go. Yeah, it feels like, in fact, it feels like there could be standing on top of this line. It doesn't really feel like it's behind. It feels like it's the same level or the same layer. Even though this paper I, I cut out or I ripped out is sitting on top, it feels like this ground is on the same plane or the same dimension as the figure here. Whereas this line, right? It really does look like it could be a wall in the background. I'm gonna draw, maybe this is a picture frame on the wall. Because why not? Draw whatever we want, maybe a flower in that picture frame. And I made that picture smaller, right? It didn't make it, it didn't make it really big. Maybe it was a medium-sized picture if um, if the figure was really close. In fact, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna now, so let's pretend that this background here, if you just wanna follow along with my drawing, let's pretend together. But if you're drawing something else, go for it. What do you notice when you're drawing? But for this one, cause I drew this one nice and thin and small, and this is the, the wall behind, I'm gonna pretend that over here, this character is standing right up against the wall. The candy is so heavy that the character has to has to be pushed back against the wall. That's how heavy this is. Um, and they're smiling because they're gonna eat that whole big candy later. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna draw the picture here.
I don't know. Did I put a leaf in the other one? Oh, I didn't. I'm going to add a leaf back in this one. Okay. Oh, and I think I had, I think I had some lines here. Okay. Right? It feels like, because those lines are the same thickness as this, or, or bigger, right? That this figure is standing right beside that, that picture. And if I had done it in thin, if I had done it in thin lines, what would it look like? Would it look kind of weird? Would it look like they were on the same plane? Try it out. You can copy my drawing exactly as well. If you want to test out some of the things that we're trying, if you don't want to come up with your own idea, you could just draw your version of what I'm drawing. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, but I'm going to draw a window over here. So I'm going to draw this bigger because the window, I, I'm going to go right off the edge. I'm going to use the infinity of the paper over here. Um, as if the, uh, the window is really big compared to that, that picture there. And then I'm going to draw a curtain rod and then maybe some curtains. Because why not? There you go. Okay. And so if I'm really far away right now, maybe we can't, ooh, excuse me. Ooh. Maybe we can't see um, clearly what's in the background here. We're not really close to this um, window here. And so while I still want to keep it thin, uh, what can I do with my pencil or sorry, with my marker that shows that whatever is behind this window is even further away than what I've already drawn here, especially if that's the skinniest I can do. Well, even if your eyes are really, 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 really good, chances are you can't tell all the details of an object when it's really far away compared to when it's really, really close. I mean, maybe if you're Superman, but if you're not Superman, chances are um, whether or not you wear uh, corrective lenses or glasses, that you're probably not going to be able to see all the details of an object that you're looking at in the same way as when you're looking real close compared to when it's far away. And so even if we planned out what was going to be in here, we probably don't have all the details. You know what? I think it's better to illustrate this by going with the one on this side where I'm going to say there's part of the window because it's really close up. But this space here should be um, actually should be bigger, right? So oh, that's probably not quite right. But there you go. The, the window is really big. It doesn't even fit in this space here. Um, and we're probably not gonna be able to tell much because I have this drawing here. I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take another piece of paper that I had something on and I'm gonna extend my workspace. Okay, there's no reason why we can't do that. I don't need to use any tape or anything. I'll just layer it on top of each other. I'll keep drawing. There we go. There's my window. Okay, draw my floor. Oh, I think I have a big marker. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Draw right across. Big line. There we go. Okay. <laughs> There's a really big marker my line there. So what do we see out this window here? I'm going to pretend like there was a tree that was growing here. It's really big. It's a huge tree, actually. And I'm going to draw some bark because we can see the bark really close up. All the pieces of the bark. Gosh, maybe we can even see some of the shadow because the sun is still over in this direction. There we go. Some of the shadow. Maybe out of the branches that are over here, there's a swing that comes down in here. So there's the rope. We're going to show the actual texture of the rope. We're so close up, we can't actually even see the swing, um, the, the part where you sit on, because it's out of, it's out of sight of the window. There we go. Um, and maybe some clouds in the background. Okay, 
So now if I bring my character back in here, it is a really big window. <laughs> That's fun. That's cool. <laughs> All right. So maybe it's not exactly the right um, size, but it's okay. We're just playing. We're just trying things out. And so, wow, can you imagine how big this tree is if this if this character went outside? Maybe they're in a land where this character has been shrunk down. That's why they have this huge candy. I love telling stories when I draw. It can be really fun to figure out why things happen um, without anybody having to tell you. You can make up your own story um, as you draw different things. Okay, so because this was fairly close, because we were so close to this character, because we're close to the window, because remember those lines there that are the same size as those lines there imply that we're really close up. We're really, we're at the same dimension. That window is on the same wall where this character is leaning up against that wall. And so and those ropes are probably really big and that tree is really huge. So let's see, now that we know that there's a tree and there's a, um, a swing there, what happens if we go back to our space over here? And we have our character who's standing quite a bit further out in the room with, you know, a normal size picture. <laughs> oh, I didn't even draw my curtains. That's okay. <laughs> so for this one, we know that there's a tree. So how, my question before was, how can we draw the tree showing that it's even further behind, right? Or further away? Well, I had said that the bark could kind of be seen um, in the other, uh, in the other drawing. And you see, I'm, I'm trying to draw really light lines here so that I can contrast, so that I can show a difference between what those lines are and the thick, um, easy to see lines of the windows because they're closer to us. And same thing, maybe I can see a couple, couple of lines of bark, like, but not all of them. Yeah. So not complete lines, just give the, the impression that there is, um, that there's some texture there. And then same thing, so swing, and I'm not gonna go as thick as I did in the other one there. I'm just gonna go a really thin line. And then maybe maybe we're far enough up that we can actually see the, the, the bottom of the swing there. There we go. Okay, so because there's so much difference between the the size of this pen and the size of these marks over here, there's no reason why I couldn't go, well, okay, I've drawn this side. I want to make a bigger difference between how I drew these lines and these lines without making these lines be the same as these lines. How do I do that? Let's see what I can do. Right, so I've added more weight, so there's more dimension, there's more contrast between what was in the what was in the background and this window here. But now it kind of looks like the window is even closer than the curtains, and I want the curtains to be even closer to this figure than the window was. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move my figure for a second. I'm going to do the same thing to the curtains. Remember, because we're just playing, because this is just trying things out, I'm not going slowly, I'm not making sure that the lines are perfect, I'm just adding some weight to it. So don't worry if you scribble over, I'm just trying. Okay, so by adding a bit more weight to these lines, can you see how the curtain looks like it's on top of this curtain rod and it's even further um, from the wall then the window was there, but it's not as thick as the character that I have here. What had happened if, I, if it was as thick? What if, what if I had ended up drawing this here and it was the same size and I wanted to show it? Well, with the techniques that we've learned right now, what could we do, right? Doesn't it look kind of weird? as if that curtain got really, really close. We're, we're standing in the middle, or this figure is standing in the middle of the room, and all of a sudden the curtain has come really, really close to us. Well, I think the easiest way would be to add some thickness to this line here, right? The line that was really close 
we show that there's contrast, we show that there's a difference between those lines by adding some more weight to the line. And there you go. So all of a sudden, just by adding a bit more weight to these lines, you can tell that this, this figure here is further or is, uh, is closer to us, to the viewer, than the curtains were. And it's still not as thick as these lines here of the candy. And so by showing the difference, by adding size, a contrast of size, a difference of size between each thing here, we were able to imply depth. We were able to show um, the different layers of this picture and not just by cutting things out and layering them on top of each other, but by using size. What are other ways that you could explore depth? I'd love to hear how your explorations go. If you wanna share what you've been making today with us, you if you get permission, please post it into our comments. Um, if you want to send us an email or you want to um, uh, take a picture and send it to us on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, we would love to see what you are making wherever you are making today. So I think that's that's what I'm going to explore um, depth this week. There's lots of other ways that we can be exploring contrast. And I've still got a whole nother week to uh, explore contrast with you next week. Um, so we'll be posting that video next Saturday. I'm going to leave my video running a little bit longer like I always do because I want to clean up because that's an important way of practicing respect. Um, and don't forget, if you want to go back and you want to press pause or you want to press um, or you want to rewatch this with someone else, that all of our videos are saved and you can check them out anytime that works for you. I look forward to making with you next week.